Hey, this is Zach Campbell here. Today I'm going to show you how to install Internet Explorer 6, 7, and 8 on a Mac. I've tried quite a few different ways of installing uh, IE on a Mac or even a Windows, and a lot of them are just really slow to open, glitchy, and uh, expensive. So I'm going to show you how to do it for free. Before we get started, I want to show you the finished product here. We click on Virtual Box. It'll open up and you'll see different browsers that we have installed. And we can double click on IE6 to launch that. And as you see, it loads very fast. Um, and then we can go to a website here and it also loads very fast. Okay. Um, and then we can actually close it and save the state so that the next time I open this up, it'll come right back to this web page so I can continue uh, testing and, and checking layout. Uh, so first let's go to virtualbox.org, uh, click on downloads, and we'll be using uh, virtualbox 4.0.2 for OS X. I'll go ahead and click on Intel Max and save that. All right, next we're going to need um, Zippeg. So go to zippeg.com. I guess that's how you say it. Uh, it's Z I P E G.com. All right, save that. And next we're going to go to uh, Microsoft's Download Center. It's kind of a long link. Uh, so if you look at the page uh, under Things You'll Need, I went ahead and put the link there for you. I just used the last three here, the uh, XP Server Pack 3 um, IE 6, 7, and 8 versions. Uh, so go ahead and download those. Those will take a little while. Um, the next file we need is called PCNT, PCI5.SYS. Um, it's how I found it was I just Googled download on that file. Um, and this is the page that came up. Uh, the, the link's also above. Uh, you want to go ahead and click on um, Down and uh, that'll save the file for you. Okay, so once you have all the files you need, uh, be sure to install Zipeg and uh, VirtualBox, and then we'll get started. I went ahead and put all those files in a uh, folder on my desktop. Um, now, we don't need these anymore since we've already installed it. All right, so now what we need to do is we need to, uh, we're gonna be using IE8 for this, and um, the process for IE7 and 6 is the exact same as this one. Um, so what we'll need to do is we need to rename that file uh, to .zip and then it's going to ask you if you want to use that extension. Uh, go ahead and say use it. Um, now what we want to do is we want to open it with uh, zipeg. And then we're going to uh, click on ie8compat.vhd and um, just extract that anywhere. Uh, wherever you put it though, you'll need to keep this file because it's actually um, running off of that. It's a virtual hard drive. Uh, so I'm just going to put it under my documents. Uh, and then wait for this to completely extract. All right, it's going to take about a minute or two, so I'm going to go ahead and skip ahead. All right, we've extracted the uh, VHD file. Okay, so we can go ahead and close that. Um, now let's go ahead and open up VirtualBox and we are going to create a new VirtualBox. Uh, so continue, give it a name, okay uh, make sure these options are set up properly and uh, we're just going to go ahead and use the default memory all right, and we want to use an existing hard drive and click on the Browse button. Um, go ahead and locate where you extracted the VHD file, uh, and then we'll open that up, and you'll get this here. Um, basically, the files that you got from Microsoft all have the same UUID, and that causes a problem. Um, so for the first one that you install, uh, you won't have this error message, but the other two you will. Um, so I'm going to show you how to change the UUID so you can get rid of this error message. Um, so we want to open up Terminal, and uh, we want to type in vboxmanage internal commands uh, set hd uuid and then um, the location of the, the VHD file that we saved. So let me type that in. And this is wherever you saved it. All 
All right. And it should say UUID change to some random numbers. Uh, we'll go ahead and exit that and close out terminal. All right, now if we go back and select that file again, it should let us, okay? And we'll click continue. And just look over that information, go ahead and click done. And now we'll double click on that. All right. Uh, now I was reading uh, somewhere where a couple people were actually getting stuck in a loop where their computer just kept rebooting and uh, giving them a blue screen. Um, I haven't ever had that problem, but apparently it has something to do with uh, the computer not being connected to the network just yet. And we will actually go and install network drivers a little later. Um, if you do have that problem, I've posted some links um, so you can take a look at those and and hopefully get that fixed. All right. And uh, Windows is going to want you to activate. For now, we're just going to go ahead and say no. Uh, we'll take care of that in a couple minutes. Hmm. All right. Mouse is frozen. Uh, we're actually going to take care of that in a second, too. We're going to install um, VirtualBox Guest Editions, which will make the mouse a lot easier to use. Um, and if this is your first time running VirtualBox, it's probably going to have a bunch of pop-ups asking you to accept mouse and keyboard inputs. Uh, just go ahead and accept those. All right, and whenever it does come up, you'll have a bunch of uh, pop-ups, just tons of them. For now, we're going to go ahead and close this one. Um, uh, just cancel this. Cancel. Um, most of the stuff will cancel, um, except for these. Uh, we will continue anyways on these. Um, go ahead and close this. And that. And close this. Close that. And for now, we don't want to restart. All right, now let's go up to Devices, Install Guest Editions. Uh, that's on the Virtual Box menu. Um, and we need, let's get these windows out of the way. All right, okay, now click Next. Uh, and we don't need to install Direct 3D support. Uh, let's let that install. Go ahead and click continue anyway. Um, continue anyway. And yes, we do want to reboot now. So go ahead and click finish and make sure it's checked as reboot now. Um, and after this reboot, uh, what happened on the other ones, it actually required me to go ahead and activate before I could even sign back in. Um, and that's pretty easy to do. Uh, you don't actually have an internet connection on this yet, so what you do is you just uh, activate by telephone, and I'll go ahead and show you how to do that here whenever it comes up. Um, do you want to activate? Yes. And we're going to go ahead and click yes. I want to telephone a customer representative to activate Windows. Um, and then you're going to have to call their number. Uh, and that takes a little while. Got to talk to a computer. All right, now that we have the uh, confirmation ID in, we're going to go ahead and click Next. And uh, there we go. All right, so it's now activated. So even though it says it's not, it is. Just has to log in first. OK. All right, uh, click on Start. Right click My Computer. And then click Properties. Let's go to the Hardware tab and then open up Device Manager. All right, under Batteries, um, what we want to do is we just want to disable these. Uh, they're not needed, and you should never need them. Uh, I don't know why they're there. Crazy. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and close down, uh, power off the machine. And if we go to, while we're on that machine there, if we go to Settings, and then we go to shared folders and let's click on this add new share folder and um, let's select the folder here uh, put it on my desktop I believe okay screencast all right we're just gonna share that whole folder um, of all the downloads that we got there and go ahead and check auto mount and then click OK and click OK to that too. 
All right, and now that's shared, we can open it back up and wait for it to power up. And it should be activated this time, and uh, we'll be able to just log right in. Once again, continue anyways. Close lovely pop-ups. Okay. I'm just going to ignore that. Let's go back to my computer properties. Um, hardware tab, device manager. And then right click on Ethernet controller and update driver. Yes, um, now and every time I connect. And install software automatically, recommend it. Okay, it didn't find it, um, so go ahead and click OK and browse, and then we're going to go find it. And uh, we see screencast on VBox, and that's actually the folder that I shared is screencast. Um, and then our file pcntpci5.sys is in there. Uh, so go ahead and click on that and open it. Click OK, and it installs the drivers. All right, go ahead and click Finish. All right, so now we should actually have an Internet connection. All right, we'll go ahead and close that window. Um, close all of these. We're going to change the screen resolution. Um, and if you have these pop-ups still coming up, uh, what you can do is you can run a Windows update. Just make sure not to update um, Internet Explorer to, you know, to a different version. We're going to right-click on the desktop and Properties. Oh, where is it? Don't use Windows anymore. Let's go ahead and do that. Apply. Okay. So that's a little better size. Um, and now if we actually just go to our website that we're going to be testing all the time. Um, it's, all right. And what we can do is we can save a lot of time here if we click on the X and then say stay, uh, save the machine state. Um, so instead of the machine shutting down and restarting every single time, it's just going to quickly save it like that. And then the next time you want to uh, to test your website in IE8, you just double click that and it should pop up within a couple seconds. So there you have it. Just wanted to show you how fast it loads. Uh, closed out of VirtualBox and open it up right here. Uh, then double clicking on IE8, which I saved the state. And I'm ready to debug. So there you go, in a couple seconds.